Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Youth Man. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up an entire 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos Clips Reference Premiere system. Now, before we get into the video, if you're into home theater and audio and video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. All right, guys, as you can see here, Clips sent me an entire 7.2.4 channel system to review for you guys. And so in this video, I just want to take you through step by step. How do we set this up? How do we calibrate it? And let's crank it up and hear how it sounds. On the far outside, we have the Clips Reference Premier RP6000F floor standing speakers. I'll be using these as my rear surrounds. On top of those are the Clips Reference Premier 500SA speakers. Now these can be used as either elevation speakers, they can be used as Dolby Atmos upfiring speakers, but they can also be used as actual side surrounds or back surrounds. In this setup, we're going to be using them as the Dolby Atmos height speakers. To the inside of those are Clips RP8060 FA floor standing speakers. Now these will be the main speakers, but on top of them, built into the cabinet, we have the Reference Premier upfiring Dolby Atmos module built into the cabinet. So these actually serve as two separate speakers. One will be the main speakers and the other speaker will be the upfiring Dolby Atmos speakers. In the middle on the top, we have the Clips Reference Premier RP502S. Now these will be the side surrounds in my setup. Below that we have the Clips RP504C center channel. And then down at the bottom we have a pair of the R115SW subwoofers. Now previously I made a video, an unboxing as well as an overview on each of these speakers and so if you need more information or details on the specs you can head over to my channel and check out those videos individually. Now enough talking, let's get these bad boys set up. First thing I want to do, I've got a short piece, probably about a two foot speaker cable and I'm going to be using this to plug into my wall plates that I've already got installed with speaker wire that runs through my walls. So you can see on one side I've got banana plugs Banana plugs don't increase the value or the sound quality, but they do make it super convenient to be able to connect. So we're gonna leave these on there and we're gonna use that to connect to the wall plate. Then on the other end, we've got just bare wire that I've already spliced. So we're just gonna give this a little twist, unscrew these terminal posts like that. Then there's just a little hole right at the bottom and the top. So we're just gonna feed that through the hole, tighten it down. Make sure it's nice and snug. Now, if we did have banana plugs on this, you can easily just take the banana plugs and they slide right in these posts, which makes it really convenient, but I don't have them installed. So we're just gonna keep it on the bare wire. Now, before we install the speaker, I wanna show you just a couple of things on the back of the unit. Right up here, this is a keyhole slot. Now this makes it really, really easy to mount this speaker. All you have to do is get an anchor and a screw if you've got drywall like I do. Screw that in there and then the screw slides right in here and slides right into the slot so it won't come off. Now Klipsch has already pre-installed these rubber feet right here on the tops and the bottom so that way it won't scuff up your walls and it won't scuff up the speaker when you mount it to the wall. The other thing I want to show you is this speaker like I mentioned can be used in a couple of different applications. You can either use this speaker as a Dolby Atmos module where you would place the speaker on top of another speaker firing up at your ceiling and that sound would reflect off the ceiling back down to your listening position. The second option is to use it as a Dolby Atmos, uh, what they call an elevation or a height elevation speaker and that's how I'll be installing this today. And then the third application would be just a standard surround sound speaker. So you could put this on your side walls or your surround backs and use that as a side surround or back surround as well. Now, depending on what application you have and how you're going to set it up, you're going to select this Atmos or surround. So in my case, I'll be using these as Dolby Atmos speakers. So I'm going to make sure that this toggle switch is pushed up. If you're using them for say just regular surrounds, you would take this toggle switch and push it down. So in my case, again, we're gonna leave this on the Atmos setup. All right, so as you can see, I've already removed my rear surround speaker. 
Now this is a different kind of mount. This is a custom cleat that a friend of mine mounted and, and kind of designed this to hold my RS62 version 2 speakers. But you can see right here, I've got just a simple wall anchor. And then screwed into that is the regular screw. And then we're just gonna take this speaker, we're gonna line up the keyhole back here. Just like that. And it slides down right on top of that. And now all we have to do is plug in the banana plugs. And now we have the first surround mounted. We mount the second one the same way. All right, so now we have our Dolby Atmos rear surrounds installed as height Atmos speakers. So now let's move on to the side surrounds. Okay, so here we have my side wall. So previously mounted right here was my Klipsch RS62 version two side surround. So I've already removed that. You can see the drywall anchor here and the screw. And then we've got bare wire that just kind of feeds up through my wall all the way through my attic and then down to my AVR. So the RP502S mount the same exact way. So first thing we're gonna do is attach the speaker wire. We're just gonna unscrew these. These feed up through the bottom. Now banana plugs would be really convenient. The problem with using banana plugs on these is that they're designed to fit flush up against the wall. So you really can't use them in this application. All right, just make sure you tighten them down really tight. That way they don't come undone. Always give them a little pull just to make sure. So again, we've got a keyhole here. We're just gonna match up the keyhole to the screw. Get it level. So as you can see, the surrounds are really easy to install. All right, so for my other side surround, you can see I had to have a custom mount that was uh, manufactured by a friend of mine. So he fabricated this out of steel. So I've got the wire coming out of my wall, which goes into my attic, comes down this pipe, comes through this curtain because right behind this is a double sliding glass door. So it sets up the same way. We've got a screw here. Then all I have to do is attach my speaker wires. And with it mounted, it looks like it's just floating on the wall. Okay, so here we have the side surrounds installed as well as the Dolby Atmos surrounds installed. All right, so now we're gonna install and get the RP6000 set up. I will adjust these and try to aim them. I don't have a whole lot of room back here. Ideally, you'd probably want these set back, probably where my chairs are, but we're gonna have them set up right here. It'd be a pain to kind of move the chairs out of the way. But we're gonna have these set up, kind of aiming right at my listening position. So we'll get those set up. Let's get the other speaker. Okay, so now that we have the speakers moved out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and open up the screen so that we can access behind the equipment to be able to make the connections for the speaker cables. And in order to do that, all I have to do is reach under here. There's a latch, open up the latch, and the 150 inch acoustic transparent screen raises and is supported by gas shocks. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with my home theater setup, Behind the 150 inch screen, I've got three Clips La Scala's as my LCR, which is left, center, and right. And then in between those are a pair of SVS PV16 Ultra subwoofers. And to be able to access behind my cabinet, so you can see right down here, I've got the Marantz SR8012, the Pioneer uh, LX500 uh, UHD player, so to access behind that equipment, I had the cabinet constructed in such a way that makes it really convenient and easy. All I have to do is slide this out right here. Now before we get behind the cabinet to hook up all the connections, I've already got some wire already pre-run. Like I mentioned, my current surrounds, I've already got those wires run through the walls, um, the back surrounds, the side surrounds. So I'm gonna be using those speaker wires for the Atmos that we installed on the walls as well as the side surrounds. The rear surrounds we're gonna to need to run along the carpet because those will be on that back platform. That'll be the RP6000F. We'll also need to run subwoofer cables for each one of the two subwoofers as well as the front three speakers. Now because the front RP8060FA have Dolby Atmos speakers built into them, on the back side of the speaker, you'll see two sets of speaker terminals. So that means we're gonna to need to run two sets of wires, two sets of speaker cables to each one of these two speakers. 
One will go to the main three speakers that are on the front, the tweeter and the two woofers, and then the other cable will connect the speaker up top which is the tweeter and the woofer for the Dolby Atmos speaker. And so let's go ahead and jump behind here. We'll make the connections and then we'll run the cables out here to the front, get the speakers put back in place, make the connections. Let's get this bad boy calibrated and fired up. Now we connect our speaker cables down here. So we've got the front right, got the center channel, Got my front left. So as you can see, banana plugs make it really, really convenient and super fast to be able to connect your speaker cables to the terminals. Now we also have to connect the two subwoofers. So you'll notice right here, I have two subwoofer out. So I can connect two subwoofers to my receiver, but not every receiver has two sub out. So if your receiver only has one, you'll just need to get an adapter like this that has one male. So you'd plug that in there. And then on the other end, it has two females. And from there, you would plug your two subwoofer cables into that. So that just splits the signal to each one of the subwoofers. But in my case, since I have two sub outs, we're just gonna connect one to the top and one to the bottom. So as I mentioned before, I've got to rearrange some of these cables because I'll be using existing speaker cables that are running through my walls to be able to power the Atmos speakers and the side surround. So I'll need to move those around. So I won't bore you with those. Needless to say, I'll get those connected. Then I'll hop back up in the front and we'll get them connected to the speakers themselves. All right, got everything hooked up back there. We'll close the screen. Get our speakers in place. Connect all our speaker wires. All right, let's align our speakers. Typically, I like to have my tweeter aimed somewhere slightly behind my listening position. So that looks good there. Get the center channel in place. Connect it. Connect our power cable, as well as our subwoofer cable. So on the back of the R115 SW subwoofers, you'll see that there's an RCA input that says LFE. So that's where we're gonna plug this. Turn the subwoofer on. Now one thing I wanna highly recommend doing is make sure that the tweeter on your center channel is aimed at your ears. A lot of guys will put this on a entertainment center or maybe above their TV. And if you look at the line of sight for the tweeter, it's going to be firing either above or below your ears. So you here you can see I've just got a towel rolled up. We're going to lift the speaker up. And that way the tweeter is aimed right at my ears. Now that I've got all the speaker wires connected to the receiver, the next step is to run Odyssey. Now Odyssey is a room correction software that will analyze my room and make some corrections via EQ, crossover settings and so forth. I'm not going to go through step by step in this video because it's a pretty lengthy process, but if you're interested in how to do that step by step, I'll post a link right up here in the card above as well as in the description below and you can check that video out at a later time. So now I've got all the speakers calibrated using Odyssey. I also went through and used my SPL meter to make sure that each speaker is level matched, meaning that each speaker is playing at the same volume. The only speakers that I did not do that with are the subwoofers. I tend to find that Odyssey has the subwoofer set a little too low for my preference, so I always boost those about 5 decibels. Now I want to give a big thanks to Clips for making this video possible on the Reference Premiere 7.2.4 system, and I want to leave you with this. Hope you guys have a blessed day, enjoy the demo, and we'll catch you in the next video.